Hi, I'm Alice, owner of Fabric Ninja. Today I'm going to walk you through the Infinity Tie Strap Tote Bag. I'm going to walk you through from the beginning to the end, showing you all the steps that you need to make it. You too can do this. The Infinity Bag is completely lined and reversible, so either side can be used on the outside. This bag is going to be dory on one side, and on the other side, this lovely Hawaiian looking bag I already have here. This tote bag is actually cut in miniature. It's the right size for an 18 inch doll, and that makes it easier for me to show you the different steps. These are all the pieces you need for one side of the infinity bag. Our long piece here is the strap side and bottom all in one. And then we have two body pieces. I've marked the center of the long strip and the center bottom of the two body pieces. You can see my pins there. And the first thing to do is we're gonna take a body piece. We're gonna lay it right on top lining up our pins and that is the first edge that we're going to sew starting in the center we're going to sew out to one end stopping one seam allowance from the corner so on this pattern it's a quarter of an inch because this is the doll sized pattern but on your pattern it might be three eighths of an inch or one centimeter or half an inch depending on what you're using you're going to put your needle down in that position and then we are going to pivot the rest of the strap underneath and you're going to sew down that side. I swear it'll work. It's the hardest part of the pattern, but I know you can do it. Let me show you how. The corner pivoting technique is easiest to show you when I have the strap on top. Once you know how to do it, you'll have no problem doing it with a body piece on top. Because we will be pivoting a quarter of an inch in from the edge of our bag, we need to know where that is. So I'm just going to lift up the strap. You see it's right here. I lay my pin down and go, okay. There it lines right up, right there. So that is the end of the body segment. So I know I need to stop a quarter of an inch inside the edge. A little more, a little less, it's all okay. So, I've got my presser foot down, got the edge lined up. Let's sew. Whoops, I'm going backwards. How about let's sew forwards? Okay, so I want to line up that pin on that red line of my foot. I'm going to press the button on my machine that makes the needle stop down to make this easier. And there we go, everything is lined up. I know I am a quarter of an inch from the edge of the body panel. So I'm going to take the pin out. I don't need it right now. I'm going to lift up my presser foot. And then I am going to take a diagonal clip with the points of my scissors headed towards the needle. You're not going to get all the way there. That is okay. You don't want to get all the way to the needle. Just you want to release the fabric around the corner. Next, we're going to pivot everything. So I'm going to hold the strap still for the moment. I'm going to turn everything underneath. And then you wiggle the fabric over here out of the way. And lay the strap fabric back down on top. So all the excess is just tucked back out of the way. Put your presser foot down. Make sure everything's still lined up up top, because I'm not using pins here. And then just sew all the way to the end. Do a little back stitch, and you're ready to go to the next segment, which is putting on the other side. At this point, you have attached the body of one side to the long strap. Now we need to add the other body panel. So we're just going to flip it over 
and align those two pins, which are our centers, and go back to the sewing machine and sew it up. Okay, we're back at the sewing machine. I have one long strip attached to one side of the bag, and it is pinned the other side of the bag for us to do the strap pivot again. I, again, have the strap on top to show you, because it's easier to demonstrate, but I'll show you the other side in just a minute. So let's sew all the way to the end here. I'll move my strap. It's lined up. I already got my pin. It marks the end of the body fabric. Okay, so I'm going to press my machine's needle down button. You could just hand crank it. There's nothing wrong with that. Okay, I got there. Take my pin out. And now I'm going to clip in to the corner here. Clip. All done. Now I'm going to do the pivot. Because I already have one side of the bag attached, there's a lot more fabric flapping around here. Sorry. But it's the same concept. We're going to get these edges lined up and then we're going to take all this fabric, just tuck it away. Everything's lined up again. I got the edge of my bag going up the side lined up. So let's do it. We're ready to sew the last corner of our bag. This one I'm going to show you how to do it with the body fabric on top. It's no harder to do. It's just harder to see in the video. So we have our main body fabric and our strap fabric lined up along the bottom edge and let's do this so we're going to get all the way close to the edge again remember one quarter of an inch on that little red line on my foot there i'm going to stop there it's close enough i'm going to pick up my foot and then i'm going to slide my scissors underneath this edge here i'm going to flip it back and you're going to clip As I said, it's harder to see in the video. It's the same thing as you do before. Pivot these fabrics around, get all the extra out of the way, line everything up, put your presser foot down, and sew all the way to the end. Perfect. Here we have the bag we just completed that's inside out and a bag that is right side out. What we're going to do is we're going to flip everything inside out. I like to just kind of stick my finger in the corner there, kind of smooth them out, flip it over and do the same thing. Look at that beautiful little corners that has an itty bitty little tuck. I don't mind it. It'll probably go away when I iron. Now it's time to iron these two bags so we can get ready to put them together. Both sides of this purse have been ironed. I saved you the ironing video. Nobody needs to see that. And now we're going to put them together. So I am going to flip Dory inside out and then I'm going to stick the Hawaiian bag inside of it. When you get down to the ends here, you go, oh crap, they're going in different directions. Don't worry, just take the inside bag, or the outside bag, but only one of them, and flip it over. Okay. 
And now both ends match. Now I have one bag inside of the other and right sides are facing. So both of the pretty sides of the fabric are touching each other. What I need to do to prepare it for sewing is just a little bit of pinning. I don't like pinning, but sometimes it's really needed. Specifically right here at the seam. I want to make sure that these seams match up. Really gives the bag a nice look when that seam is right on top of itself. You'll see right now my seam allowances are going in the same direction. This can really create a lot of bulk. So what I do is I flip one one way and one the other way. And then I will stick a pin in it. You may notice my pins are going this way, not this way. So perpendicular to the seam allowance, not parallel to it. I sometimes sew over my pins. That is pretty dangerous if they are in fact parallel to the seam allowance. It means you have like a million more chances to hit the pin with your needle, which means you have a million more chances of your needle breaking and it coming flying and hitting you or causing your machine's timing to go out. And nobody needs that. So if you're going to sew over a pin, make sure your pins are going perpendicular to the seam. We are ready to sew the bag together. We have our outside and our inside right sides together and we are ready to sew everything. If you were using a tab, you would need to put it between the two layers at this point. This is when it will be sewed into place. Honestly, it's not really exciting this step. All we're going to do is go around the entire bag, lining up everything as we go. When you get to the strap, just lay it flat, kind of push it down with your fingers. It's common to have a little bit that's not quite right when you get to this section. Things wiggle, just don't worry about it. It will all work out in the end. So just lay your strap flat because the last thing you want is one side of your strap to be wider than the other side of their strap. Then you'll have a little bubble. So just smooth it out with your fingers. And let that seam allowance be your fudge factor. It's a little bit harder on the doll size because you only have a quarter of an inch fudge factor, but you can do it. Okay, I've sewn all the way down here. I'm gonna sew right off the end. Now you can see, they pretty much turned out exact. But if one was shorter or one was longer than the other, here's the chance you can make it up and not worry about it. The reason I have you sew both ends is so that any difference here at the end can just be accounted for in that last stitch. If you already stitched that, don't worry. There we go, stitching right over the end. I did a little back stitch there to make sure that point is good and secure. So there is our end. I'm gonna do it on the last side. The two layers of the bag are now sewn together and it's time for me to show you how to flip it right side out. You may be wondering, where are we going to flip it? There's no hole. Yeah, I know. I got so carried away with showing you how to do the corners that I forgot to leave a hole. So now we're going to make one. If you, like me, forget to leave a hole to turn the whole thing right side out through, you can just make one. I always suggest turning it through the bottom of the bag. It makes it easier to hide if you are going to have one be only the lining. And it's just a good spot. It's pretty wide. You can get a good size hole if you want it. 
So I am just going to seam myself a hole from here to here, and I'm going to turn it through that hole. We are now ready to turn your tote bag right side out. We're going to do so right here, the very bottom. We've left a hole or created a hole if you forgot one. And the first thing that we're going to do is turn the straps to the hole. So you can reach right up inside the layers and kind of push the strap from the outside and pull from the inside to get that strap through first. It's a little complicated, so I have a tool that is going to help us. This is called a quick turn. It has three different size tubes and different sticks that go with them. We're going to actually thread this up into the bag to turn those straps super quickly. Quick turn is what Dritz calls theirs. Generically, it's called a tube turner. I'm going to take this tube. I'm going to slide it up into my tube all the way to the end. And then I'm going to take the stick. I'm going to poke it down through. So it's actually pushing it down through. I'm going to pull it out the other end. Pull it over the top. And when I pull it out, my, my strap will be right side out. So I'm going to go back and kind of fish out the stick from the other end. And then I'm going to do it on the other side. Go back to the base, slide the purple tube all the way up into the other strap. You might have to wiggle around a little bit to figure out their way through. Push it all the way up to the top, take the stick and push it down. You honestly don't have to push it a long way because once it gets caught it will do all the turning for you. Here we go, push it to the other end, it's all turned. Pull it off the end. You see that my tube turner went through the end here a little bit. Happens when you push a little bit too hard. It's not a problem. You'll be able to scratch that hole out very easily. So I have the straps. So I have the straps for the bottom hole here. And I'm going to use those straps to help me turn the rest of it. So right now I have the red Hawaiian bag and the dory and purple bag and the straps for either side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to touch tuck the Hawaiian right inside. And then what I need to do is go back and pull my corners out on the top and close up the bottom and get ready to press it. I've actually already pulled out these two corners here. I used a pin from the outside and a chopstick from the inside to pull those corners out to make them nice and pointed and smooth. They are still a little rounded. I could work at them harder to get a good point, but I like them rounded. I've pressed the tote bag and now we're going to apply a little bit of wonder tape at the bottom to hold my seam together. I want to explain real quick the difference between the easy seam and the wonder tape. I use wonder tape a lot when I do zippers. Wonder tape washes out. So after the first washing, the wonder tape is going to be gone. You can't rely on it to actually hold your seam closed. The easy seam is going to stay inside there and keep it glued together. So if you wanted to actually close this just using the easy seam, you could do that. I just prefer to sew it to make sure it's really secure. So this is a piece of Wonder Tape. I've already cut off a little chunk and Wonder Tape is pressure sensitive. The easy seam you do have to use with an iron. So I'm just going to lay it right in my opening. It's not exactly easy for you to see, but it's laid right in there. I'm going to kind of squish it together and then it has a backing. So I lift this up, pull it off, and you can see that the wonder tape is attached there. I should have pressed a little harder it looks like. And then I'm just going to glue this seam temporarily together. 
there we go next up to the sewing machine I'm gonna top stitch this edge then I'm gonna do my hand stitches right at the bottom then my bag is done our bag is ready for top stitching although you don't technically have to do this step it really adds a lot of crispness to the bag I like to start on the strap because it makes the overlap much easier to hide I have my machine set up with blue on the top and pink on the bottom it should make it easier for you to see I have a plain quarter inch foot in here and I'm going to be using this inside marking here or this little ridge and that's an eighth of an inch I'm not going to be back stitching at the beginning it'll make the overlap at the end much nicer to hide as I've said before, it's a little hard for me to sew with the camera straight in front of my face. So um, please pardon the not perfect sewing skills as we do this. We're gonna get to the corner. You need to lay everything flat and try to keep this edge really hugging it so that the curve goes completely through there. If you've noticed that the edges aren't quite lined up, feel free to take the edge and kind of roll it in your fingers. And that will help the edge really set right on that seam again. Sometimes there's a little thread peeking out, just pull it out. Now we are to our strap again. Make sure everything is laying nice and flat. We're coming up to the end here I'm going to set my machine so it stops needle down it'll make it easier to do the flip and I think that's gonna be the right spot to stop but we can turn it and go whoops that's too far I'm gonna take another stitch turn it oh that's much nicer now we have the very beginning here and it's kind of thick and you'll notice my machine doesn't actually want to move forward it's because the presser foot is not level because of the hump of fabric at the front and not at the back. So what we need to do is level out our presser foot so it can grab that piece. There is a um, item you can buy called a Genoma jig, which is, or a hump jumper. These are both products that help you get over that little hump at the edge of fabric. However, I've made one out of cardboard and it works really well so with my needle down I just pick this up um, you can see I can set set it astride so on both sides or I can just stick it in the back which is pretty much all I need to do to get over this little hump okay, it moves through easily forward wait until my next spot that I'm gonna turn I think that'll be it let's check it that looks good Then I'm just gonna stick my little bump of cardboard back in the back and there we go okay we're back to the end here I think that's the right spot to turn check it out say yep it is reaching back of my machine grab my little bump jumper so right to that spot in the point where I think is the right place to turn turn my work check it out say yep that'll work stick my jumper in the back again there we go and now we're almost back to the beginning so I have the threads at the beginning on both sides I'm gonna just pull those out of the way so we don't end up catching them and then I am going to follow very closely and try to make sure everything lines up right on top as it did before and then I'm going to hit my little tie off on my machine you can just do a tiny back stitch or you can leave long ends and then tie them by hand I'll pull out to the edge 
I'm going to clip my threads and we've done all of our top stitching. It's time to close up the bottom of the bag. I've already put some wonder tape on it to hold it still and I'm going to be sewing the opening closed using a ladder stitch. To make sure I don't end up sewing the lining, I'm just going to take the lining and pull it right out like that so I'm only dealing with the layers of fabric that I need. The goal when making a ladder stitch is to make it invisible. You don't want to be able to tell that there's a hole right here when you're done. You want it all to hide. I have threaded my needle, tied a knot, and sunk my knot back here by going inside. I am going to take a little bite of the fold of the light side. And I'm going to take a little bite of the fold of the dark side. And I keep doing that all the way down. 